Hello and welcome back to Eddie and Reacts. Now Indeed. we've done a, a special uh, episode for you this week. Uh, in addition to our usual uh, schedule programming, um, so Ed, tell us what it's no, about today. It's uh, it's uh, it's all about this uh, thing that's going on about at the moment on YouTube with Ren. And it's, the reaction today we're going to do is to the, uh, well, it's actually the announcement that he's put up. Mm -hmm. He's talking about what's happening, blah, blah, blah. And we're actually going to re react to what we hear and what we know that's happening around this uh, mm -hmm. song that's been taken down of his sick boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're doing this to, to, to support Ren. Yeah. Um, we know what it's about. Um, and this is going to be part one. Part two is going to be actually uh, reacting to his song. To the song, where he, boy, yeah. yeah. He expresses himself musically. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's going to be a long video, guys. Uh, yeah. But, get uh, yourself a cup of tea and a sandwich. Yeah, get yourself You'll something to eat. You will be here a while. We will, yeah, we are. We're not going to edit this. We're not going to take bits out because I don't think... Well, what, what what's in this video? I think the whole thing is relevant. You need to keep the continuity, yeah, so that the guys can actually see. That's right. What we're so we're going to do this, and um, we think it's important yeah. because this could happen to anybody. That's so right. it's not just Ren. It could happen. It poss possibly it can happen to anyone. Anyone. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then shall shall we get on then? Ed? No, I've got one with Here you. we go. So this is a video that I never ever really wanted to have to make but it's very important for me that I do. All the time, artists all over the world pour their souls into their work, and that work is tainted by money or greed. A lot of you will have been asking me the question why Sick Boy has disappeared now, as well as YouTube on streaming services. It's a video that was very close to me. It's a video that told my story about my health. It's a video that told the story of many other people who have been gaslit by the medical community. Uh, it's a story of greed in the music industry, ironically, funnily enough. It's also a song that I poured tens of thousands of pounds into for a music video, for promotion. It was also the leading title of the only number one album that I've got, so I was very, very proud of it. And we'll no longer have that song, guys. And I want to go into the reasons why. Also, I do recommend uh, sticking around to the end of this video, because I've got a very exciting announcement about all of this that relates to all of this right at the end. People who have been following me for a while, they'll know the sort of person I am, they know the principles that I have, and they'll know how I treat other independent artists. So they'll know why it was so important for me to have to make this video. And I want it to be as unbiased as possible. Obviously I'm emotionally affected by it, and that may leak in, right? But I want, it, I want to share entire clips of these conversations so there can be no doubt. Also if Cujo and his girlfriend want to share any more, screenshots of other of those conversations I encourage them to because I believe that this should all be public knowledge so there can be no doubt uh, I, rather than taking people's words from it I would like to them just to see transparently what has happened here to give context for all of this back in 2022 I buy a beat from BeatStars right for anyone who doesn't know BeatStars is a platform that connects producers to artists who need beats I do produce most of my own work but I wanted to find some hip-hop beats for inspiration I, what I would usually do is buy a beat arrange it slightly differently, tweak it myself, add my own vocals, add my own layers and stuff like that. I find this banging beat, right, uh, from a producer called Cujo Beats, which I buy an unlimited license for. This is all very important to keep in mind for later on, right? I buy an unlimited license, which means that I am able to put it on all streaming platforms and get as many streams as I want and all recording plat on platforms like YouTube, etc. right? After I do this, I send uh, my YouTube guy that I work with and I send um, the publishing team an email just giving them a heads up being like, yo guys, uh, I bought this beat. They need to be registered correctly. Content ID needs to be turned off. I'll put a clip of that. I'm putting screenshots of those messages here just in case Cujo claims I never did this. I did do this. I also went the extra mile and messaged the team and said, look, we need to credit him on Spotify credits and stuff like that as well because sometimes artists don't always fully credit uh, producers. I think that I forgot to do it in the YouTube description for like the first month or two and then I then um, updated it and then he was fully credited the whole time, right? Just want to 
put my first comment in. I'm, I was a little bit surprised, actually, knowing how talented the guy is, that he felt that he had to purchase a beat. That he didn't have to introduce, yeah. Um, I, mean, I know I can see why he's saying, you know, he wanted some um, external ideas. Like a different view on it. Yeah, but he could have... I mean, he says he tweaks it himself, but um, I would have thought, and he certainly he probably will now, yeah. that if he liked the beat, then if you're going to tweak it, why not... Make it yourself. Make it yourself. I mean, from what I have saw the guy, he's quite talented because he can play a good guitar, he can play bass, keyboards, and I no doubt, as he said, he's programmed his own beats before. And like you, I've thought... I thought it strange. I thought, well, you're capable of that. Why not? And then I thought, well, you're right enough. Sometimes you're too close to something. You like a little bit uh, of somebody else's take on it. Of course. But for, with that idea, but why did why not make your own beat and then pass it to the guys you work with, other musicians, and say, look, what's your take on it? Because sometimes the guys you work close with mm. will hear, will see it a bit different than that, mm. rather than using somebody else's, yeah. which puts you into a situation we're now looking at here. I just, I just feel it's strange. That, you know, cause... It's, not, it's, it's not that he's not capable of it. No. I just thought I'd mention it. Oh, yeah. No, I agree with you. Which is what we're interested in. Yeah, and I, I was thinking that myself. Because there was a lot going on. I was in Canada treating and stuff. But anyway, he was credited fully, like, very soon in, everywhere. And as far as I was aware, registered everywhere. So I don't think anything of it, right? Also... In the Beat Stars contract, it says very clearly that the person selling you the beat has to own the beat. And if they, if there are any uh, elements of the beat that he doesn't own, he has to let you know. This is very important to remember for what is to follow as well, right? Excuse me. That sounds like on the bar, on the part of um, the person that so the company that sold him the beat. That sounds a, a bit like a get out of jail free card to me. Well, that is because. How I see it is, they're actually telling them I used to check that. Now, how I see that is, <clears throat> Beat Stars. That's in the book, Ed. Look, Beat Stars, if I'm not mistaken, are a platform mm -hmm. that other producers can make up beats and samples mm -hmm. and send them to them. If they, if they so I th you know, look at it and think that's good quality, we like what that is. So for me, as the publishing house, if you like, they should be looking at, firstly, is the quality of the sample and everything up to par for being sold. Mm. And the second thing is, I think they should be asking whoever's supplying it, can we have proof that you actually own the copyright on this? Exactly. You are the owner. You hold the copyright. It's like, if you like, a manufacturer, like just say, for instance, you're a, you're a well-known cornflake maker. Mm. But you... you it's distributed through different supermarkets. Mm. If you go to a supermarket and buy, and there's a problem with it, say you're putting something not right with it, you know, there's poison, or whatever. Mm. You don't go to the manufacturer, thank you. The person that sold that to you... That's the first person of course, isn't it? the supermarket. Mm. And it's down to them to check the quality control and yeah. everything, right? Not, not down to you to mm. check that they, that they did this right or did that right. Mm. As you're the selling platform or the selling supermarket, you have an obligation to quality control that and check. And that's where the first, for me, the first mm. check should have been made. They should have checked, yeah, we're taking it because the quality of what your sample is great. Now, do you actually own it, 100% mm. own it? Copyright. So what do you think, guys? To, on that point, down in the comments below, does it sound like this uh, Beat Stars? Beat Stars. Uh, I'll pass in the book in so, their contract. Um, so yeah, I think there's no problems. I buy the beat. I record a song, and this is before things have blown up with my music, so I'm still pretty underground artist at this point. I record the track, put it out. I even get a message from him at some point, which is also important to remember because of the hypocrisy of this whole situation. That's like, wicked, I love the track, okay? <laughs> remember that too. Before I begin, I just want to add this. I have no problem with Beat Stars. I think they're a very innovative company who actually help people make art, which I'm very, very passionate about. I think the contracts and the things you're getting into could be clearer because we're now in a situation negotiating older tracks bought from beat stars um i would love to talk to the um if, if anyone from there is watching i imagine they will be at some point i would love to talk to the uh, ceo 
founder of BeatStars face to face um, just because I want to understand how something like this could have happened and I want to understand why it escalated the way it did because from what I've heard he's someone who cares a lot about artists and someone who creates a platform like that I think must be very passionate about music I you know I, 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 I can sympathise with the guy I mean I, I, I like the guy mm. I think he's got a valid point and I, I feel sorry for what's happened but I'm detecting on his part a slight uh, naivety slightly been a little bit naive, naive naivety, naivety, because it this actually state and that thing, beat stars are trying, got their get out of clause with saying, blah blah blah. But you should check with the owner of the mm -hmm. song. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm assuming that Ren didn't do that mm. because it's got to where it is now. But in saying that, in his defence, he shouldn't have to do it. He so back to my first point is... That, that was is, my point. They should have checked out before they accepted it to their platform. Mm. If they're not happy with the quality of it, or in fact that they have any doubt that the person you know, supplying it has 100% copyright on it, they shouldn't put it up there for sale. No. But they've actually put it down there, you know, it, it, you as the artist buying it, it's your duty to check it out. No, it's not. I'm afraid it's not. <laughs> it's not... Uh, my duty to to go into a supermarket and buy a product and, and, and verify it's okay before I buy it oh, no. or, or, or whatever. It's <laughs> again, it's down to the supplier that I'm getting from, which is the super. And in your case, the musical supermarket exactly. that you're buying from is Beat Stars. What do you think, guys? Do you think our our uh, opinion is right there? I'd love to chat to you in the comments below if you're if you're listening, and I'd love to figure out why this happened and how we can stop things like this happening in the future. Um, I also think that there needs to be a bit more stringent um, checks on if people are selling unlicensed samples because then things yeah. tend to get a little bit sticky, like they have here. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. I have no problem with Beat Stars because. Um, I'm not interested in going to war with them because I think that it's really cool that there are, there's a platform like that that exists for artists and producers to be connected. Just thought I'd put that out there, make that clear. Right, so I arrive home from Canada after a year and a half long treatment of treating brain damage and autoimmunity, which a lot of you will know if you've been following my journey. And I'm expecting a nice two weeks with my mates before I do my first ever solo show in five years because of my health. So I'm just like, I want a nice chill time. I want to be able to focus on uh, rehearsing and stuff. Very early on, I wake up to a message saying, yo, your song Sick Boy has been taken down. So I, I look at it, and sure enough, it's been copyright striked from this guy Cujo Beats' the channel. And initially I'm like, oh, this just must be some automatic fuck up. So like, I don't take it too seriously. I send him a message like, yo, there must have been a technical error or something here. No response for two days. So I'm like, what's going on? So I, I, I check his channel. And then I see a comment of, of, of that beat that he licensed me. And I, and I see a comment that's like, Ren has left me no choice. I'm sorry that I had to do this. And I'm like, okay, so this was intentional. Like, what? Like, the last conversation I had with this guy was months ago with him being like, yo, big up your work, it's sick. So I'm like, super confused about it. So I send him another email like, dude, what's going on? Again, I get absolutely no response. So I put a comment on his YouTube comment section and I'm like, Bro, I'm trying to get hold of you. Why are you ignoring me? Like, I, d I just want to resolve this amicably. What's going on? Finally, I get a response on Instagram. And um, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to put all of these responses in their full form so that there can be no doubt as to what happened. I'm just going to read out, like, the key moments and explain the key moments. But if anyone's, like, interested in deep diving so there can be no doubt as to what's happened here, feel free to pause it. Um, if Cujo and his girlfriend, like I said, feel like we've I've left anything out, they are welcome to post it. I have nothing to hide about this situation. So he responds and he tells me that he's been talking to my lawyer for months, which I have no idea about. I've been in Canada. And um, he seems like quite a nice guy initially. So I'm like, okay, maybe this has all just been a misunderstanding. I remember even saying to like Connor and that, I was like, this has probably just been a misunderstanding and something's gone wrong here. Don't worry. He sounds, seems like you're all right, dude. We will sort this out. But then after that little exchange, I noticed a comment in the YouTube comment section on his video saying that I'm lying about the situation when I thought that we like on the same page here. So I pull him up on it and he's like, oh, no, I didn't say you were lying when he clearly did. That should have been like the first red flag for me, but still giving him the benefit of the doubt. I was like, OK, maybe another misunderstanding anyway. So I contact my lawyer to find out what the hell is happening because I'm in the dark about all of this situation. And he explains to me that I've been sold a beat with a stolen sample, with an unlicensed sample, and that the uh, Bulgarian sample 
the B- Bulgarian choir sample owners um, had chased him and gone, look, you've used this beat without permission. You- wow. I think, I think what he said there, was it the Bulgarian choir? Bulgarian something. I think it was the Bulgarian choir. I, should, I think. But anyway, they hold the sample. So, <laughs> if they hold the sample, I'm assuming what's happened is they're the ones that's brought this into question because mm. they're the actual copyright holder. Mm. If he's bought this from Beat Stars, mm. or but he's bought it through Beat Stars from this Cusio, mm. I mean, I can see where this is leading. It looks as if the Bulgarian choir or Bulgarian, whatever it is, it's, this is flagged up, yeah. and they're now saying, wait a minute, you're using a co- mm. copyright sample here you, you never get permission for. Mm. So we want whatever we want. Mm. But they should be getting, really, they should be getting in touch by the original, who, who he purchased it from, mm. which would be Beat Stars and Cusio. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, you know, it seems a bit a roundabout way. Um, and I've just looked at that email there, strikes me as being funny, and I was a little fun strange how these people that he's dealing with this Cusio, he's responded to him via his lawyers, mm. they haven't responded back with lawyers. No, if I was taken up with anything like that and I had any legality issues, mm. first thing I would have done was say, Well. Sorry, I'm not going to discuss this with you. No. Talk to my lawyer. Absolutely. And you would have thought they would have. Mm. So he's, mm. this guy's responding himself. It, make, it seems strange to me. Mm. It seems strange to me. I mean, I feel sorry for Ren now. Oh, yeah. I can see where this is going. Oh, there's definitely. I can de- without knowing the rest of the video, I can see the path that's he's taken. Stamp, the yeah. sample that's without permission. Yeah. Um, and so you need to give us 50% of the publishing split. And what my lawyer's done, because we were sold a beat in good faith and it wasn't actually cleared, he's, is he's reached out to Kujo and gone, look, I think you need to absorb this for selling this um, uh, in bad faith, basically. And they've gone, no, we're, we're not going to absorb that. And then it's escalated. And they've, I think because my lawyer was being slightly slow with re- the responses, they uh, also keep in mind, I don't know any of this is happening right now. To get my attention, they issue a copyright strike on the video, which affects my YouTube channel, by the way, and the video gets taken down um, as a form of leverage, uh, (laughs) which is a bizarre way of dealing with things, I think, uh, because it would have been a good idea to contact me, maybe, like anyone, anyone first, if this was getting so, like, blown up, like, maybe the lawyers, maybe Cujo could have actually reached out to me, the artist, nobody did. Um, so I found that a bit bizarre. Any fucking way. Then I read a comment, another comment that Kujo's posted, calling me a coward uh, to pay the royalties he's owed. And I'm like, what royalty? Uh, that's also, I'm, I, in my head, the publishers are just paying him the money and now the, the, the situation has to change until, the, until everyone agrees on it. But I wasn't even privy to that conversation about what a fair split should be yet. So I was like, what? I, I don't owe you, I don't owe this guy money. Like, there's no master splits on the um, Beatstars contracts, by the way. So all money that comes in to Cujo, which should be paid to Cujo, rightly so, comes from the publisher, which has nothing to do with me, by the way. I explained this so many times in this conversation, by the way, and he's adamant to say, probably short of like 50 times, pay me my money. I am nothing to do with his money, right? So it's a very bizarre thing to keep saying, but I try to explain that to him patiently, never really takes it in anyway he calls me a coward on this comment so i pull him up on that this actually starts to then rub me up a little bit so i'm like i pull him up on that it's saying like the hell i cowardly anyway i'm still giving him the benefit of the doubt at this point anyway despite this i feel like he's probably just misinformed so i still take his side on it and i go on to reassure him he'll get paid his publishing money because i want him to get paid his publishing money doesn't affect me in any way so like I was like yeah I'll chase it up for you I let him know that I'm happy to split publishing if there's a bit of a grey area and I'm kind of really assuring him it's remember it's really important to remember this by the way guys because some of the lies that are posted later make me out to be really unreasonable so I'm like yo if there's if there's some simple mistake let's split the publishing it's cool I'm I'm happy to do that 
yeah anyway so he comes back to me and lies more he says it's always up to the performer to clear the sample it's not it's up to the producer but unless there's been a conversation but in this case as you can see we're willing to make concessions for you to get your fair share so actually it's me making the concessions here because he sold a stolen sample and i'm like you know what you can still have some um, publishing split right mm -hmm. so like i'm actually being well that's quite charitable of of ren isn't it saying look you know you've done that but you can still have some of this i, I agree yeah it's very charitable. You know. i mean he seems a nice guy I still go back to this point, but what I've seen in the thing with you, and that last, um, <clears throat> that last uh, script there that was up, it distinctly says here about the beat stars, and I think there's a little bit of naivety, as I say, because the bottom line is, Ren's buying, in good faith, from beat stars. Mm -hmm. And they're selling him, as far as I'm concerned, a sample that someone is, they haven't vetted properly. Mm. In fact, it's, it's not only does he not own the copyright, it's stolen a sample from a Bulgarian choir or something. So this looks to me a bit ominous. It's like, if I'm not, if I'm reading where this is going. It's a bit of a rabbit hole, isn't it, Ed? For, well, if you, you know, for me, it looks as if the middle ground is you've got beat stars and a Bulgarian choir, the supplier, the original copyright, you've got this, person in the middle who's looked it onto a platform who stole it, he stole the thing, right? Now it's not his, it's copyrighted. And now I'm thinking, by looking at it, Bulgarian choirs made an issue of this. Oh, wait a minute. Who did they get to? The guy that says he owns a sample, which mm. is huge. Maybe they're asking money. Maybe this was all this is about mm. to cover his back. That's right. To pay. And the guy in this, this, what's his name? The guy that, stole the sample that's crucial i think i think he's thinking well i'm going to need all the money i can get here so i'm going to stand firm try and get as much money out of ren as possible to cover my back from yeah because ah. bulgarian choir uh, we want to know yeah yeah that's he knows what, what he's like. done that's he knows what, what he's like. done but as i say beat stars being the thingy that should all be looked into i think I you can't, you a, can't make money, Ed, no. out of people that aren't straight. No. No, well, that's right. Look, it's not right. That isn't right. But in saying that, that, this is an issue. It's big for Ren. But in the great white world, it's only a little pittance. I mean, you only need to look back a couple of years and uh, Sting took a well-known artist to court for his use of every breath you take in the mm. song. Mm. And it now ends up where I can't remember the thing. I can't even remember the artist. I don't want to make any names in case it's, I've got it wrong. But they know who it is. And Sting won the case. And apparently, Sting's in receipt of a couple of million every year for the rest of this, mm. this artist's life mm. for years. So, in that respect, it's a very small thing for Ren, although it's big for him. Mm. Big for him. So, it's something you have to be careful of. And when you're using these samples and things like that, it's it's a minefield. Mm. And I would never use a sample, personally, mm. unless I was 100% sure, and, not, and, and, and it was verified, this is definitely copywritten by this person here for 100%, and they've gave you 100% profession of usage. Absolutely. And that's it. You know, that's great. That's great. quite on reasonable here. And he's flipped on his head like, we'll be good to you, you know, because I've done nothing wrong in this situation. Anyway, I was like, he, and then he says, I was under the impression you would have received a warning. I had no idea that the video would be completely taken down. Another lie, as you'll see soon. He he and his uh, lawyer agreed to take this video down as a form of leverage. Um, it was our only possible negotiation tactic to get a response. Maybe message me. Yeah. They're, they're scratching their head. How can we get a response? Okay, we'll take his video down, issue a copyright strike, which also, I didn't actually violate the contract. Um, not intentionally um, so the only possible tactic dude message me send me an email like you've messaged me before to tell me that you love my work so like send me an email about this anyway um, he says he also wants to wrap it up immediately and get the song back online another lie as you will see later on because he decides to stick to his guns and use the video as leverage anyway the plot thickens I Sticks to his guns. I mean, it sounds to me like 
I'm in the shit here and I need all the money I can get. So if I can stick to my guns, stand firm, get as much money as I can, that's my, that's my thoughts on it. Well, that's that's what he's right. doing. Right. Look, if there's a copyright issue being brought up here, it wouldn't only just be on Ren. It's got to involve that sample. Because mm. that's the issue. Yeah. And he's saying that he's the owner of that sample and he doesn't have the copyright on it because the original is this Bulgarian choir or whatever. He doesn't like to stand So up. if it's a stolen sample, <laughs> he's got to be brought into issue as well mm. for the copyright infringement. And if he is, then there's a penalty on that. Mm. And I, like I said, it looks as if he wants to get as much out because he's got to cover his own tail. Yeah. Well, he hasn't got a leg to stand on. No. And no. Ren's done nothing wrong. I get an email I don't, from I don't their lawyer. So. I don't think and, so. Um, I'm not going to share it in case they start claiming I'm, sh I'm sharing things I'm not supposed to. Um, but I get an email and it says, on top of the publishing split, they want a £3,000 payment, right? They want a 15% retroactive split of the master, which has nothing to do with publishing, which means like 15% well, of everything the song has ever made since it came that's out. Right, that they want the master. The master's, master's not the, to be, you buy the, that got to do? You buy the copyright, the copyright, uh, publishing copyright, it's to the, the music. Yeah. And the music, uh, that could be when written music, you know, whatever, the publisher, but you don't, by the masters, the master don't belong to you. No, the master, the master belongs to probably the artist, hmm. or a lot of times publishing company. No, it'll be, it could be the actual recording company own the master, mm. or indeed, in these this day and age, the master might actually be owned from the recording studio you recorded mm. for. It could be part of the deal you made, you know. Well, yeah, I suppose, and, yeah. And, and, uh, you know, you know, you had your own studio years ago. Mm. You might have made a deal like that and say, well, look, I give you the multi the mix down there, but the masters stay with me. Mm. I did yeah. actually used to keep all the masters. Well, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah, master doesn't automatically become part of a publishing deal. No, no. The writing credits for the music and the lyrics and that, that's the publishing. Um, mm. Retroactively, so it. since it's come out to this moment and then, in, into the future when I've paid for an unlimited sa sample uh, unlimited license beep and with that you're talking money from record sales you're talking money from streaming things you're talking all of that when they haven't put any effort into promoting the song he's made a beat and he's stolen part of the beat and he wants 15% of everything the song has ever made for that plus the £3,000 advance out of principle I wasn't going to give him that but A because like I would may have been slightly open to negotiations if they hadn't used the song as leverage and actually treated me like a decent person. I don't put like it lies about the situation, right? But nah, out of principle, I wasn't going to agree to that. And also to clarify, when I've been in rooms with producers and we've made a song from scratch, I've done a lot of like 50-50 splits or I've done like 25-75 or with other collaborated artists, we just agree on a split that's like 50-50-25. So, you know, like 15% isn't outrageous, right? What's out? What's outrageous is that they already sold it with an unlimited license right from the get-go. So you go into BeatStars thinking, I'm buying an unlimited license for this much money, right? And I was broke at the time when I bought that beat. Um, so it's like, you go into the situation buying... <laughs> I've got to be honest, that's taken me aback a bit. But... That, 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 that's actually surprised me because... Yeah. I'm sorry, Ren. I mean, I could be totally wrong here. Someone might explain it to us, but... They explain this to us, yeah, I know. Yeah, go on in. Uh, he's broke. Oh, no. And yeah, at the start of the video, he, he made said this video. He spent tens of rand on it or something. Tens of, ten, tens of thousands. Yeah. I don't get how that equates. No, I don't. Bit odd, that one. Uh, Can you odd. explain that one to us, like, guys? Like, guys yeah. And then yeah. later on we go. down the line, it can come back and sting you if they go, oh, this slight thing, well, we found a loophole here, which means that now you owe us all this money, right? So it's like, it was kind of unfair because say, say you buy a painting off somebody for £10, the and then the the price of it rises exponentially because maybe the painter dies or something or he becomes really popular you don't then just go back to the person you sold it to and go oh that painting's worth like 20 times more now give me a bit more money for it because the transaction's been done and that's kind of how i felt about the beat stars thing it wasn't about me losing money it was about yeah. the principle of like we've we've stepped into this agreement and i was in full faith thinking I was buying an unlimited sample, but that's uh, unlimited license, sorry, but that's not actually what's happened, is it, right? 
And it says that if I don't agree to this, they're within their right to claim 100% of the song because I have breached something in the contract, right? Now, this is what I breached. <clears throat> Apparently, content ID was turned on on the track, okay, on YouTube. Um, as you'll see from my earlier on in this video, I actually specifically requested content ID turn, was turned off and my YouTube guide did turn it off. Um, there has been something uh, to do with the distribution where somewhere along the line, even after I specifically requested this, it may have gotten turned on at some point, right? Where this doesn't actually make any money, which we've got proof of because I actually let reactors, I, I let content creators um, monetize their own videos where they're reacting to my songs. I've done this since the start because I believe that everyone should get paid. It helps promote me. I'm not losing out. Everyone's a winner. A rising tide lifts all ships, baby. So, uh, I've got to applaud him for that, Ed. Kudos, kudos to him for yeah, that. Absolutely. He's allowing, because uh, yeah. I think that's a great thing because it helps, it does help the creators that we sell. But it's only, it's great for him because mm -hmm. what's it doing is promoting him. It's promoting We're him. We're promoting him. Yeah. So, yeah. but It's like asking somebody, yeah, um, you know, you promote me, right? And what I'll, what I'll do, right, is let you pay me for it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's wrong, Ed. Yeah, that is wrong. And what he's doing, I think, is to be applauded. But just before we can't continue, what I did like is an analogy a little five minutes ago. His analogy... Uh, like of, painting. of the painting, yeah. selling it for a certain amount of money, and then because it, the artist dies, they become a you look for more. Uh, that's, that is ridiculous. Of course, mm. it's ridiculous. Mm. You buy, I mean, it's, I can equate this to, because we buy, there's lots of studio musicians over the years have went in and did a session, and they'd be paid a fee for their mm. putting their, you know, and then it's went mega. Now, those guys signed the contract to go in and do that. Mm. When, we go in and it, it, they do it, they paid the money. Six months later, it's a number one hit. You can't go back in and say, I want more money. Well, no. You agreed to the fee at the time, mm. and that's it. It could have been a flop, couldn't it? It could have been but, a flop. You know. So at the end of the day, that's what it is. Mm. Like, um, that's but, crack on. I, yeah. I'm like, they're using this as leverage, but legally, but thus is the world, they actually had something to lean on with that. So they were like, look, if you don't uh, agree to these terms, 15% retroactive master split, um, this share on publishing, um, and a £3,000 advance against the master, uh, we're going to take 100% of what you own. At this point, I'm obviously pretty annoyed, uh, which is pretty understandable, right? Anyway, at this point, they've got my attention, so there's no reason they need to use the video for Sick Boy as leverage, right? So I give them a fair warning. I'm like, mate, if you don't put the video back up on Friday, I'm going to have to put a public post explaining why it's down. And I give him a fair warning, which is also important to remember because later on he plays the victim saying that I've put a post encouraging my fans to bully him, which I didn't. I gave him a fair warning about it. I never once encouraged them to bully him. I just needed to explain why my video was down because this was proper stressing me out. And I, and I feel like I didn't want to be silenced about the whole situation. But the time comes around. I put the post out and I'm always still thinking for like a positive solution here. So I have like a brainwave of like, oh, I've got a brilliant solution, right? So I approach him and I'm like, dude, look, I know that things got complicated here, but out of principle, I don't really want to budge on the master split for this thing, but I've got a much better idea because a lot of my fan base are like now giving him, because I put the public post out, a lot of my fan base is giving him grief and I'm like, you know what? I want this guy's life to get ruined because of this, like, it's despite how f frustrated it's made me. I don't, want to get, I don't want this guy to get ruined. I don't want him to get abused about it. I just wanted to get the song back. That was the thing. So like, I sent him a message. I'm like, dude, look, I thought of the thing. Because I, because I am a man of principle, I didn't want to bend to threats and stuff about the song being claimed 100%. So I'm like, I've got a much better idea. Let's make a song. We'll split it 50-50 down the middle. Master, publishing, everything. A song from scratch. Then if we do that way, it'll be like a fuck you to the industry. Yeah, You and me on a track. Um, you'll make way more money this way because it's it's 50 50 you'll also get my fan base on your side it's going to be a great thing because i'm always like i want to i tell you what i tell you what that is one heck of an olive branch for somebody that's treated him so badly yeah it's, it's a great offer he's made there um, you know, he, he didn't have to do that of course he didn't but i think yeah i mean that is it shows his character if anybody did doesn't that it? anyone you'd think that's a great offer that 50 percent um, and, and the chance of um, 
adhering his fans to you. Yeah. And rely, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it just shows you the character of the guy. Yeah. Look forward. Yeah, I don't want to really look does. backwards. I don't want to look at all these things that happened in the past. I'm like, this is actually going to make him even more. And he rejected it. He turned it down, which I still think to this day is... Now that proves to me, right, that he's not interested in 50% of, of the possibility of this track going viral and making him... He thinks he's going to get more money by standing firm and getting as much money out of Ren as he possibly can. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds to me like he's talking to, to a child, Ed. Yeah. I mean, you know, the way the way this guy is uh, constructing his sentences, and, you know, I mean... He merely sent, and uh, I've been effed by a lot of people in this industry, and that's why I joined Beatstars stroke Sony Pub. So am I right in thinking that Beatstars are actually owned by Sony Publications. Is that right? Let us know, guys, because that's what it looks like. Yeah. Is he just saying this or is this for right? I can't believe that because Sony Pub... I mean, <laughs> I can't see Sony Publication letting something like this through the net. Oh, I can't. But anyway, Unless he means I've joined BeatStars and Sony Publications. No, it's not saying and. It's BeatStars stroke public Sony Pub. Well, so that would lead me to believe that BeatStars is a subsidiary of Sony Publications. Let us Does know, guys. Does anybody know, guys? particular red. If you know, let us know, guys. There's a bit of a yeah, in the comments, yeah. what happened and what happened next. But it's a shame, man. And if you're watching this, you really should have taken that. I'm sure you are watching it. You really should have taken that deal. It was brilliant. Um, not only would it set you up with way more money, which is obviously what you most care about in this situation, but it also got loads of my fans on your side, which would also set you up for all yeah. things that you release independently as well and you'd have come out this looking good shame I offered you that olive branch I offered quite a few olive branches on numerous occasions which you weren't interested in but then after that there's a post on Instagram saying that I've mm. stolen samples from people <laughs> which is bizarre because I never have so I send him a message being like that he, he said that a British artist has got in touch with him and been like Ren steal samples which is obviously complete made up bullshit right so I messaged him about that I'm like what samples have I stolen? The Vera Hall one that I just put out, totally cleared. We cleared that with publishing company because I actually don't like steal my samples. And then any covers that I've done, they're just on YouTube. You're allowed to do that because there's a cover license on YouTube. So like, what are you talking about? To which he then just like ignores it, takes the post down and then like, uh, <laughs> and then just goes on some other fucking tangent. So it's like kind of grasping at straws here to make me look like the bad guy. So we arranged to have this call with the lawyers and Cujo and I'm actually really excited to have the call because it's the first time I can talk to Cujo face to face deal deal with this like grown ups like adults and talk to each other um, but <laughs> it's not how it pans out so we get on the call and the first thing that happens is the lawyer just says look Ren I think that you taking this public was very unprofessional and I was like hold on a second I wasn't the person who took this public first of all like taking the video down is a an aggressive move and also I didn't take it public, first of all. Kujo was commenting countless things on his YouTube before I even made the comment. A, calling me a liar, a coward, a numb. So, like, to say that I took this public, nah. I just responded to what happened and then explained to my fans while the song was down. Those posts are still up for everyone to see. All the posts on his comments are, are still uh, there for everybody to see. So, first of all, it was kind of like we got into it straight away with me, like, having to be, like... I put it straight and then everyone was like, okay, yeah, fair enough. The funniest thing about that call is Cujo was on it. He did not say a single word. Even when I like addressed him with questions, his, his lawyer would interject and go, I can answer that. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to talk to the person who's like, <laughs> you know, like an adult. I want to talk to this person. Um, and then my lawyer even, there's even a moment when my lawyer's like, look, I want to address this, this uh, question to Cujo. Do you actually feel like this situation is fair? He says nothing and the lawyer interjects again. So for that whole call, which, you know, took about half an hour, 40 minutes, he didn't say a single word. And I thought that was disrespectful, given the circumstances. He later said, claimed that it was because... From what I've seen... Oh, um, I are. Uh, look. But from what I've seen of this guy's... The way he speaks on these text messages, right? No wonder the lawyer told him not to say anything. 
Well, because you don't want to, you don't want your client to, to be in, incriminating themselves, and he probably would have done. Look at the way. He, I know. Look at the way. This he is what I'm saying. I mean, I don't. I mean, I, I feel really sympathetic to Red, but I mean, if I was ever in a situation like that, the first protocol I would be was, you know what? Sorry, don't talk to me. Mm -hmm. Talk to my lawyer. That's right. Talk to my rep, my reps. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have this conversation because I'm not going to say things that I don't maybe want to say. So I've, this is conversation is as much as you're ever going to have with me. Mm -hmm. Talk to my lawyers. I would have done, yeah. But, I mean, I mean, this guy's called the real Kuju. I'm implying here there's a fake one <laughs> and he's the real one. That is the real one. No, that's, that to yeah. me is a red flag straight away. Yeah. But, I mean, that's because, I mean... Thinks a lot of himself by the sounds of it. I mean... <laughs> You're speaking to someone and you're speaking to someone about something as important as this. You're talking, you know, kind of formally, as if you, you're you uh, kind of educated. Mm -hmm. That's because, I mean, wouldn't you say that's because, mm. you know, and, and I mean, calling somebody a man child, bro. I mean, what else would it be? That's because I let the professionals own the bit. I mean, if, you're, if, you're a, yeah. if you're a human at all, male or female, of course you're a man child. That goes without saying. Mm. I mean, it's, I just, I don't go, I don't, I, I feel sorry for a guy, I mm. really do, for Red. He doesn't yeah. legally know enough That's and it should it. be between the lawyers, but no, man. Like, regardless of your legal knowledge, we can still have a conversation like adults. Like, I'm not, I'm not here to try and, like, intimidate or anything <laughs> like that. I want to talk to you like a grown-up, brother. And, um, and that didn't happen. I, yeah. I wasn't afforded that luxury. I was talking a fair bit on that call about how I felt about the situation and what I felt was right. And I also said on that call that I didn't think that a retroactive split was right um, because of all the re reasons I've mentioned, but it is what it is, man. And then we came off the call and I felt pretty let down by it, to be honest. This is where the plot gets even more ridiculous. And I'm sorry this is a long video, guys, but <laughs> this is mad. And this is emotionally exhausting, this bit. So I read a bunch of comments on Instagram from this person talking about the contract, saying things that aren't actually in the contract. I'm like, who the f is this? So I message him and be like, Yo, by the way, you're misinformed. The contract actually doesn't state uh, that it's on me to clear the samples. Then I click on the profile. I realize that it's Cujo's girlfriend. So I immediately unsend all those messages. Because to be honest, look, he was getting grief from my fans. And I... The girlfriend. Why am I? The girlfriend. The girlfriend. Uh, well, I mean, if she, I, I, I'm thinking, well, that's okay if, it's, if she's a Philadelphia lawyer or something like that. Mm. But then... If she was, she wouldn't just jump in. No, she wouldn't. On an email. It would be proper, proper um, you know, you know, you know, it would be dealt in uh, proper letter form. I think to myself, you know what? It would. He yeah. needs someone supporting him, even though that he's been an asshole. I don't want to, like, start messaging his girlfriend and shit, whatever. I'll leave her out of this. But she sees that I've unsent the messages and she instigates the conversation, says, have you done an oopsie? We start chatting for a long time. <laughs> my my oh. well he's obviously talking to a child well that's a child yeah. this is the thing this is why I'm saying from my point of view I can sympathise with Ren I mean you've got my full sympathy on this um, and I don't think you've done anything particularly wrong at all I don't think he's done anything wrong well I, I I think he, he's done a little bit of, to coin her, her phrase, a whoopsie, a whoopsie actually, it's not a whoopsie, a whoopsie. It's, it distinctly says on that beach star about the copyright thing. Mm. And that should have been a flag, you know. The fact that it doesn't say we can guarantee the sample you bought as the owner owns mm. full copyright, mm. that's what you'd expect. And you would expect a sample house or producer platform, I like Beats or whatever, that they've vetted all that and made sure that everything's all above board mm -hmm. before they sell any product through them. Because when you sell a product through you like that, it, imp it implicates you as well. Mm -hmm. Well, he said he said he likes them, you know, and uh, that's fair enough. But, well, that's fair enough, I but mean, I wouldn't be so charitable. Well, I wouldn't I, be yeah, so charitable. After this, I would, you know. Time will put those messages up so that you can read it. 
it actually ends up being it seems to me like it's like semi amicable after a while of talking to each other like we we sh you can pause this and read this if you want it's like basically the long and short of it is is like she feels like cujo has been misrepresented and and feels like it's a lot of the industry's fault my lawyer's fault and stuff like that which is kind of what cujo feels like right she then threatens to break my kneecaps which even though it's a little bit out of pocket you know me i laugh about it the thing is the thing that rubs me up about things like that is if that had been the other way around i never actually once got violent about this situation if that had been the other way around they would have been like run such a violent later on they would have been like run such a violent person or using bully tactics because they've s spoken about like how i'm using bully tactics by simply talking about the situation publicly transparently she also gaslights me by saying you know like imagine what would have happened if he had mental health issues i have a very long list of mental health issues i am the person with mental health issues you're not considering what it does to my mental health that's a bit of a smack in the face isn't it mm. what if my boyfriend had mental health issues imagine what it would do to him he has got mental health issues mm. and yet they don't mind doing this to him but i mean it's just that... funny the way the way people work like that you know no, i mean that that's uh the threat Mm. I've got to come across the line and break your knee. Yeah. And that wasn't him. Mm. This was his girlfriend. I know, yeah. yeah. Marvellous, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fine when you take down a song that got... means that much to me. Uh, a song that I've, I've poured into that I'm exposing a part of me that's very vulnerable uh, about my health journey. Like, you're not considering that, are you? All I've done is post publicly about um, <sighs> about the situation. I've never told anybody to send you guys abuse or anything like that. And actually, if anybody's watching this right now for, clar for clarity, even though I am very annoyed about the situation, I don't want anyone to send them abuse. I don't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm annoyed about the situation, but it's done now. The song's down. It's gone. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I don't, I'm not in trying to ruin somebody's life over this. I'll have my own form of revenge, as you'll see at the end of this video. But... I'm not trying to ruin anyone's life over this. So, like, if they say to me that I'm trying to incentivize stuff like that, I'm not, guys. I don't want you to go and abuse them, right? But it is up to me to talk about this situation fairly. So, like, we seem to make some middle ground. She's even talking to me about, like, her ADHD and knows that I've got ADHD and, like, you know, maybe we've just got... So I'm like, you know what? She seems pretty level-headed, right? So, like, cool. She seems very level-headed, Ed. Mm. I don't think she does, really, does she? I mean, what's Batman got to do with it? <laughs> wow. But she only thinks that's what Batman said. I know. You know, yeah, I yeah. mean, I just don't get it. I just, I don't I think it. Ren's very charitable over this. I mean, level-headed. Well, She'll come over to, to the UK and, and or wherever Ren is and, yeah. and kneecap him. I mean, wow. I mean... As I say, my opinion is it's all water under the bridge as far as this is concerned, but I would never have got involved to that extent. No. This, you know, I would have I wouldn't have entertained that. And I thought, look, let my lawyers deal with this straight off bat. You need to speak to him and you speak to my lawyers. Mm -hmm. You know? Um and the only thing I can think about here is it's obviously he's dealing with someone, I'm assuming. From another country, in fact, they say, "Well, we'll drop the land at come over here." Right? Maybe there's an issue because of international law. Mm. You know, I don't, I don't know. But at the end of the day, copyright law is copyright law. Mm. <laughs> you know, whether it's the states, Britain, Japan, whatever, copyright is copyright. Mm. You know, um, and I'm sorry, I still go back to um, what my first thoughts are, and I'm not trying. I'm not trying to trample on anyone, but just how I see it, and I could be wrong, but my observation on it is that it should have been uh, Beat Star should have, you know, it should have been, it's there, for me, it's their onus to make sure they're selling yes. something that is, what they say it is, mm. free to use. Because mm. they're bringing it into their, you know, mm. it's like, as I say, take it to the supermarket, you know, you're the buyer in assuming that the manufacturer, whoever it is, big brand companies of food, are supplying them with credible mm. things for sale with the public. And if they're not, the public won't go direct to the 
Matter of fact, you go to where you bought it. Of course you must. You mm -hmm. go to the supplier. And in this case, but regarding rent, the supplier is beat stars. Mm -hmm. Whatever way you want to paint it. Mm -hmm. You know what? So Maybe these guys are, it's just a big misunderstanding and we can figure a way to amicably sort this out. And I say to her, look, yeah, I'm happy to split the publishing, but I don't really want to split the master out of principle because I bought this, right? You know, but... I then at this point I start being like you know what maybe I'll split some of the master for the future stuff just to get this out of the way even though I don't believe I should because they've stolen the beat with a stolen sample I'm like if this just gets this over the line I'm happy to split the future master I even say that in the email thread to the lawyers and stuff right so I'm like I'm conceding a little bit here because I just want this situation done with we end on a good note in this conversation then the next morning <laughs> I wake up to post from her all over my Reddit lying about the contract and then I see a comment on Anthony Ray's video where he's talking about the situation from her saying this is what the contract says and she made up some, she wrote a whole passage that wasn't even in our contract it was completely made up so after her being super nice to me behind the scenes in this conversation and feeling like we've read I wake up to read this and I'm like I start losing my mind because I'm like these guys they're like they pretend they're on my side and then it's just like they publicly post all this stuff. So I'm like, I put her up on it. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, first of all, this is defamation. You can't be out here like making up stuff that's not even in the contract, you know? So she's like, <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Right, so next I find a bunch of messages on Reddit from Cujo's girlfriend lying about the contract, which I'm going to put up here, which is actually very illegal, by the way. Um, no, I won't be pressing charges over it. I just want to get this situation out of the way, but... Um, so I'm just going to put all these up for you to pause and read if you want to it's ridiculous basically um, she also says that I was obviously upset so I wasn't the most cooperative as you guys if you skip back in this video you'll see I was extremely cooperative when I found out what was going on mm. I was being very amicable when I was trying to offer Cujo solutions and being amazingly supportive and sympathetic I refuse I'll to fully say. acknowledge that a mistake on my end causing Cujo not to get paid was at the heart of all of this. It wasn't. A stolen sample was at the heart of all of this. Yes, the, the, the publishers, right, failed to correctly register Cujo, which wasn't anything to do with me. They've now remedied that and there'll be a back payment for whatever percentage we end up on. No money's been lost here, right? Oh, right that is something go. that was the publisher's fault, which I was very annoyed about, which I actually sent a message to the publishers about explaining how annoyed I was about that situation, fighting for Cujo in that, when I didn't have to fight for Cujo because he was being a prick, right? So I sent that message to them anyway, fighting on Cujo's side, because despite all of this, I am a man of principle still, right? I kept threatening to sue and go public. No, I didn't. I wasn't threatening to sue. Um, I did say I would go public if... So, um, before you go to say, so I'm glad that happened because uh, that's cleared it up for me. And kudos to BeatStar, who I'm assuming are the publisher. Mm. Yeah. Kudos to you guys for remedying that. Yeah. Uh, because obviously it looks as if... You know, from what I'm reading between the lines, you have realised there has been mm. a mistake on your An part. Oversight, but yeah. you've been man enough company to man up, you know, mm. and and uh, uh, you know, uh, and uh, rectify that, and obviously recompensing it then. So hopefully that won't happen again. Mm. And this is maybe a lesson for other companies mm. that when you're bringing anything in, you really need to make sure that what you're bringing in is authentic. Yeah. The, the people that are supplying it to you, that obviously the quality has got to be good. And, you know, that, you know, that goes without saying, whatever sample, it's got to be a good sample. But the biggest part of it is that whoever you're getting it from, it's very hard it's to verification. Yeah. They own it. Mm -hmm. And that would alleviate any of these problems in future. Mm -hmm. My song mm -hmm. carried on uh, you uh, being used as leverage. I gave them a very fair warning because they didn't need to use the song, the video as leverage, and they kept on doing that. That was because I kept getting hundreds of messages a day from my fans being like, where's the video, where's the video? And I wanted to address it all at once. And I also felt like I was being treated extremely unfairly, right? Um, I had to accept by giving up all my shares of the song exchange for a fixed fee. Um, yeah, that was something between my lawyers. Ren took in public the next morning. Yes, I did. Right, let's take this home now. At this point, I've just lost all amicability, right? I'm pissed off. 
I, I messaged Cujo's girlfriend and him saying, it's the first time I've threatened to sue, but I'm like, if I see any more lies from you guys about this situation, I will sue you guys. Mm -hmm. um, because it's like, that's my public image. Like, I pride myself on the fairness that I show everyone that I work with, right? And, and my principles. And I'm also very against greed and I stand against it militantly, which a lot of you will know from my work and how I treat people how I treat people that I work with, right? So them spreading this stuff that I'm trying to be greedy here massively hurts my public image. So I was like, if you guys lie any more about this, yeah, I'm going to do something about it, basically. And then I'm talking to Cujo and things get more heated. We get another email from their lawyer saying, you know, like, if you won't agree to our terms, we will take 100% of the song. That's where we stand on it. That is final. If you do not agree to this retroactive master split, we're taking everything. So I messaged back, I'm gonna show you that email, I messaged back, essentially summarizing this email, I just say, I'm gonna take down the song myself. I'm fed up of this. I'm fed up of you threatening me with my own song that I poured myself into. I've explained what it means to me. I explained to both of them what it means to me. So I'm like, I'm taking it down myself. I don't wanna let them win over this. I, I've been in situations in the music industry before where I had to concede because I was broke and I just had to let a powerful, greedy person win over me, you know, like, and I know this is not the same situation. It's not like Cujo is like, like this, in this huge position of power here, but how they've dealt with this whole situation was ridiculous. So I was like, rather than like bend to this leverage and just out of principle, I'm just gonna take the song off. And it's ironic, man, because the song is about greed, you know? And it hurts me a lot that it's down now. It proper hurts me. I, I, I can't stress that enough because of what the song was and what the song meant to me, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. So I, I sent these emails. I also send a mass email out to everybody. The publisher, uh, Cujo, uh, the lawyers involved, just saying how disappointed I am across the board, even from people on my side, I was just disappointed at how this whole situation been, uh, dealt with because ultimately at the core of this situation, the only person getting proper hurt financially from this is me, right? Because of my hard work that I've done to promote this music, because of my story and how that's been exploited. I'm the person who will suffer future losses for the earnings and the, regardless of earnings, fuck earnings for a second, that song I was proud of, what it meant to people I was proud of. Uh, the messages that I get from people every day uh, telling me like uh, how much they relate to the song how much it helps them through difficult times you know like that's gone now that's taken away from people so yeah I'm pissed off anyway so I send that email out me and Cujo share some pretty heated words uh, if you're a petty person you'll probably like to pause on some of this it's ridiculous uh, one of the things that took the piss the most that he said uh, when I, you know, I just lost my call at this point. I lost all patience. One of the funny things he said after all this was like, if you really cared about your fans, then you would leave them the song. So he was turning it around on me when he'd used the song as leverage. He said, if you cared about your fans, you leave it up for them. Then he said, you're letting my, I'm letting my pride and ego get in the way because I'm not paying him money that I didn't think he deserved for selling a stolen beat, right? He's saying that that's my ego. It's my ego's fault. And then he's just saying, he kept saying, just pay me, let me get my bag, I want the money, just give me my money. I explained to him, I explained to him again, like, dude, I'm not the person that pays you the money, I've explained this to you so many times, it's the publisher, and he's like, alright, cool, it finally seems to sink in that, like, I haven't stolen this man's money, I haven't taken a penny of this man's money, the publisher was at fault for not registering it properly and they're re resolving that and then he'll get his money from the publishing, I don't want a penny of that, I don't care about that money, do you know what I mean, like, whatever, he deserves a bit of money for making that part of the beat, sure, he shouldn't have stolen uh, a sample and sold it to me, he, theoretically, he could have all of his publishing taken away, but even after all of this, I still agreed to give him a bit of a publishing split, just to shut him up, man, so it's like, I could have been even more petty and dug my feet in there, but I just want this situation over with. So the song's down. <sighs> the funniest comment that I'm going to end this on, because this is going to be some uh, album artwork, by the way. Uh, single artwork, sorry. This is the next announcement. He goes, all right, peace. Your music sucks, by the way. Which is really funny, considering... Um, you know the message earlier where he told me that it was an honor or it was like it was really good to work with me you know funny it's funny hypocritical 
funny 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 but yeah sure my music sucks brother cool that's gonna be uh the single artwork which leads me to my last point ladies and gentlemen i'm releasing a song about this whole situation and it's dedicated to cujo and it's coming out next week it's coming out a week today it's called cujo beatdown um and i love it we made an amazing video for it i made a beat by the way the beat has no unlicensed samples in it i made the whole thing myself i wrote all the lyrics myself all the beats are mine in the comments if you know what significance that shade is in yeah the, uh, i noticed it came up on the screen shade don't know. No, no, it's no. a new term to me. Yeah. And that'll be going I'll up on YouTube said, and Spotify <clears throat> next week. I'll also be recreating Sick Boy because those lyrics and that arrangement is mine. So for the anniversary of Sick Boy, the album, you'll be getting Sick Boy, the beat, remade, bigger and better than ever, without Cujo's input on it. So look forward to that as well. And then there's also... A third song dropping. There's a little bit more positive. Next week's song is angry. All right, I'm just going to warn you there. And before Cujo and his like that, they before they start complaining about blah blah blah, artistic license here. You know what? I've said my piece. I'm not. I'm not interested in ruining your life, bro. But I felt like I needed to get it out somehow, and so I got it out somehow. And I hope you're watching this, man. And I hope you enjoy the song. Because it's dedicated to you, baby. Anyway, guys, I know that this was a long video, but I wanted there to be no doubt as to where everything stood in this situation and why you don't have a song that means so much to so many people and means so much to me. But there will be a revamped version of that song coming very soon, guys. And um, if you've made it this far, thank you. Sincerely. And um, I hope there can be no doubt as to this situation. Thank you. Well, well, there you go. Any, anything to summarise, Ed? I think what he's doing is a good thing. Oh, yeah. Remake it. Mm -hmm. In fact... You know of somebody else? Well, Taylor Swift had a similar problem... Mm -hmm. With Sony. With, with copyright, mm -hmm. etc. And uh, she's reclaimed all her music by... No, it wasn't. It was Apple, wasn't it? I think so. I, think, yeah. I don't yeah. want to name her, but I think it would be right. <laughs> but she had a problem. So she's re-recorded... If not all, but most of her catalogue, she went back in and re-recorded that, and she's just reselling again. But the beauty of that is, she's went back in and recorded it with hindsight. So she's looked at it, mm. you know, a few years down the line, my eyes, eyes and ears, a few years down the line. Thought, well, you know what, I could do that again, but I, I could do this in it now, and that, because you know yourself, a lot of times artists walk away from the recording. Mm. And they find the line, because at some point you've got to shut the lid and say, that's it. That's Otherwise, it. you'd never release it and you'd be quiet. Uh -huh. So you, you let it go. But sometimes down the line, you might think, you know what? I can hear that little bit of being in there or this or that. She had the, she's got the, she had the perfect uh, vehicle to change all that. Mm. And she did. Mm. And he's doing a similar thing with it. So I think it's a great idea. Absolutely. And, he, and it'll give him probably, like he says, he, he a different mindset in different years and possibly make an even better version of it mm. i think it's a great idea anyway guys we hope you enjoyed our analysis of well it's a bit of a it's a long field. video a i know bit. but um we're here to support rent basically and uh, this is part one part two is uh, our reaction to his uh, his video the video in question, yeah. That's right. Talking about, yeah. That's right. So join us for that, guys. Yeah. And I'll see you on that video. Sayonara, guys.